All right, this is the DCR that came off of that heavily contaminated truck. Had a lot of water, had a lot of rust contaminants in it. Um, the plan is we're gonna put it back together and test it. So got it back together, make sure everything appears fairly healthy, like we kind of showed in the past video. Don't see any serious damage even from all that contamination. There is, after cleaning it a little more and kind of looking closer, getting the fluid film off the bushings, there's, there's some scoring in the bushings uh, where the rust and the debris that was pushed out of the filters uh, kind of gouged some of that. But based on the design of how these bushings have so much surface area, I think it's actually going to be all right. And we can, we'll talk a little more detail on that and kind of show what that means and why that's different uh, with different pump designs. But uh, we're going to go ahead and performance check this pump, run it through a variety of conditions and um, see how it does versus new pumps. We've got a bunch of data of what new pumps look like. So we know what they should be. We've got just a factory forward supply pump on here supplying these, this pump so that it's just like in the truck conditions. It's the same pressure, same flow capability. Try to make it as similar to in the truck as possible. So we're gonna run, uh, this next point is a 2800 RPM. So pretty high speed and 2000 bar. Uh, which is a high pressure point also. This is, uh, this would be like full, full load on a 2011 to 2019. We're at 500 bar now, I'll work it up in pressure. There's 170, 180, 190, 200. So right there is So that's 29,000 PSI, 2,000 bar, full rated pressure, full rated uh, output. We're at 181.2 liters an hour right now. Uh, looks like the last four or five brand new pumps has been 177, 180, 178, 180. So it's right there with the other ones. Return flow. 130 and a half. The last pumps were 130, 127, 127, 129. So we're right there, identical to the last four or five new pumps actually. So it's a good sign so far. But we always run varieties of speeds, varieties of pressures, different IMV um, or FCA milliamp, so open and closed. Basically sweep it through all kinds of different conditions to make sure that uh, in all truck operating conditions it'll be healthy. So this next point is a lower pressure point. So high pressure versus low pressure, we can check health of the valves, we can check health of um, the actual bore and the pistons and all that themselves as well. But the high pressure is definitely more abusive, obviously. Uh, but so far, this thing looks... is performing actually just like a new pump, so that's great news. There again, this is basically showing at this point that it uh, that it's not hurt, it's not damaged uh, from all that contamination. But we'll run it through the rest of its paces. The rest of this test, we'll speed through that and then show a graph summary of kind of where it landed versus the population of DCRs and this serial number before. So after the contamination issue on this truck, we got the pump tested, uh, ran it on the bench. Everything actually looks really good. Uh, it lines right up with the performance of a new pump. So that uh, really is a testament to the design of the pump, but also it just shows that there's no degradation of the valves. There's inlet and outlet valves on these things. There's no uh, excessive leakage or scoring in the plunger bores or any of the critical areas. So it performed great um, and, and really is not distinguishable even from a new pump. So that, that's great news, what we wanted to see. Um, 
you can see from some of the bushing wear that it has eaten a decent amount of debris. Uh, there's some rust and uh, bits embedded in the bushings and um, where basically where the pressure lubed channels and cavities are pushing lubrication up under there. In the case where they eat debris, it can um, score up some of that. Similar to uh, bearings on engines actually, uh, where if you end up with softer bush, softer bearings on cranks and rods, for example, they can actually eat a decent amount of debris. Uh, we ran into that even when I was doing engine development at Cummins. You'd try to go to harder bearings to be able to handle higher cylinder pressure, higher loads. That's great, they're longer life bearings, but the problem is you gotta be really careful about built-in debris or any kind of oil debris in general because those hard bearings can't accept uh, anything, uh, any kind of debris in there without seizing and cause, scoring cause lots of damage. So the bushings that are in the DCR are a big contact patch and they're fairly soft. Um, and the way they're lubricated, they don't really have any wear uh, or any issues like that. But what we found here was that they are capable of embedding debris and passing debris as well without translating that to scoring on the cam. So the bushings really took one for the team and uh, did not force that damage onto the metal surfaces that really matter. So what we're gonna do is put this pump back together again. I actually took it apart after bench testing it because I beat it up on the bench for quite a while, ran it at high pressures, high loads, and I wanted to make sure that uh, even with some of the bushing damage that it had, even though it's not severe, that we didn't have any problems. So uh, everything looks the same as it did before. Looks great. Gonna put it back together and just to, uh, prove how confident we are in it, we're actually gonna put it back in the truck. I don't suspect uh, we'll have any problems whatsoever. The performance is great. And just because of the design of it, it's not gonna be sensitive to failures. And the, the reason that is you can, this pump, you know, we've, we've shown previously in kind of the, the mechanics in the architecture of these pumps. And, and really all we're trying to do is educate people as to how these different things work. It's your truck, it's your money, it's your livelihood in a lot of cases, and, and it's important to know how those things work. Uh, and, and you decide based on the pros and cons of how things are, uh, what you wanna do. But you can tell in the case of this, nice big bushing contact patch, and uh, as there's lots of load on this thing generating the pressure and flow, it spreads all that load out over a wide contact patch and large area. And that's why it's not really sensitive. That, that plunger sits there and that doesn't even rotate or skid on it. Um, and, and it just has a nice big broad range. The CP4 in contrast, as we've described before, it has a metal to metal hardened steel roller metal on metal there with a really small contact patch so there's no like manufacturing no quality whatever issues with this cp4 design bosch makes really really good products they make uh, i mean the injectors that come out of these things are great uh, they make great products it's just a difference in design really the cp4 can function just fine if everything in the system uh, is as intended. But if you have deviations from that, which unfortunately we have, um, then that's where they struggle. So basically you have a small contact patch with a lot of pressure in one area that doesn't leave much room for error. If you get the kind of debris or water corrosion, like what we saw, this is going to have a lot harder time, uh, not seizing up, not causing catastrophic damage. So it's really just a inherent design change. And that's why, I mean, these things would have gone through tons of validation testing before they ever got released. And I'm confident they probably didn't have a lot of issues, um, but that was in more controlled environments. And out in the real world, cases like this, guy doesn't know what he's gonna get. As a reminder, this is some of the kind of stuff that was in the system. Um, a pump that's a fairly sensitive design is gonna struggle. A pump that'll handle a lot of abuse is gonna be what you want. So. What we're going to do is actually to be super thorough is to actually pull an injector also. We want to make sure uh, to kind of study the health of the rest of the system. Um, the piezo injectors, the Bosch piezo injectors that are in these trucks are, are actually pretty tough. They can handle some amount of abuse, but they don't handle well 
the metal that gets generated by um, the CP4 when it fails because that's a hardened steel, small, fine debris. But what they can handle sometimes is a little bit of other water or uh, contaminants. But we're going to pull an injector out of this thing. Um, I'm actually going to go after the driver's side front injector, which is the closest to where the uh, outlets of the pump are into the rail. So theoretically, it should be the closest to where a lot of the, the contaminants or debris might have get um, introduced into the rail relative to pulling one from the passenger side where it would have had to cross over that crossover line. So we're going to pull an injector, see how that looks, and uh, show you the test data from that. So we got the injector out of Dane's truck. Here with Carter, we're going to run it on the bench to see what kind of shape it's in. It's ingested a lot of the same water and debris, but um, based on how the truck was running, I'm hoping that they're not in too bad a shape. They can handle some amount of water and debris. The piezo injectors are actually pretty good. It's a Bosch injector. Uh, they're pretty impressive. Uh, they cannot handle really f fine, hard metal debris like a CP4 generates when it fails. But uh, we don't know what to expect, kind of similar to the DCR. We're just doing it live so you can see what the status is with it. But first, to make the absolute best comparison, we're actually going to test a brand new one. Um, then this is going to be kind of our, our benchmark baseline as to uh, what it should look like. And that's going to be the best comparison. So piezo injectors are actually really sensitive to injector return pressure. Most solenoid injectors, uh, you just usually want fairly low return pressure going back to the tank. Piezos are quite a bit different. Uh, there's a hydraulic coupler inside of those. They actually need a significant amount of back pressure to uh, be able to actuate correctly. That's why some guys have a hard time when they have a complete system apart, say in the, effect, in the event of a CP4 failure or when they have everything apart, they got a lot of air in the system. Um, sometimes there's not enough injector return back pressure to make the injectors fire. So if you have an LML or if you have a six, seven power stroke and it won't start, but it builds rail pressure, but it won't start. A lot of times it's because there's not enough injector return back pressure yet. So sometimes you got to bump start a little bit, shop air pressure to the backside, get them to fire. Once they're firing, then they're good to go. So we do similar on the bench. That's what Carter was waiting for. We get it going, get it firing and kind of warmed up and then wait for uh, the return flow uh, to stabilize and build up pressure so that everything's stable and accurate. So right now we're at 2,000 bar, 1,000 microseconds. This is similar to a full load type point. 2,000 bar, 200 MPA, same as 29,000 PSI. So that's what these, a 2011 to 2019 Ford will run at is 2,000 bar max pressure. So 116 millimeters cubed of injected quantity at that condition. about 19 millimeters cubed of leakage return back to the tank at that 1,000 microsecond point. So at our normal benchmark, uh, we were at 15 millimeters cubed here of leakage of injector return flow. That's a new healthy injector. So that's, honestly, if you suspect contamination or damage to an injector, the leakage or return back to the tank is one of the primary health checks. So this one's done. We got a good baseline. Same day, same everything. So it's the best uh, comparison point. So 1,000 microseconds. Electrical duration and 2,000 bar, we're back up to that steady state point. <laughs> 116.5, pretty much, uh, it's actually exactly identical to that other one so far. We're at 17 cubes of return right now. So it'll come down a little bit when we go to that 790 microsecond point that we take the uh, leakage return flow at, but it's impressive. So new injector at this condition was 2,000 bar, 790 microseconds, it was 85 and a half cubes. This one's 85.8, that's uh, it's amazing. So 
the Bosch piezo injector is actually a, a, a pretty good injector. It's it's a it's a feat of engineering it to some degree, and they are. This basically goes to show they are pretty tough. They just can't handle all the metal that gets generated by a CP4. So in this case, obviously they had water in them. They had some amount of rust in them, but at least those rust flakes aren't going to be nearly as aggressive and hard. They would break down more at pressure and things than uh, the fine metal that gets generated by the hardened steel that comes off the CP4 rollers. So there again, that leakage point is really uh, the main health check for the injector. It's at 15 cubes, which is exactly like the new one. Um, actually pretty impressive. I was definitely expecting yeah. it to be at least a little bit high. It's got 110,000 miles or something I think on it maybe. So over 100,000 miles and at least the last few months have been pretty rough. Uh, but those injectors are pretty tough too as long as they don't get fed with metal from a, from a pump failure. We got the pump back together. Got the injector back from finishing testing. We're gonna put it all back in the truck. Uh, with the parts that came out of it, uh, even after it got that kind of fuel. And uh, we're gonna flush what we can out of the rest of the system, put new filters on it, and put her back together. I don't expect any problems whatsoever. We'll show you how it's running after the fact. Uh, we'll be scouring data, making sure everything's healthy. But um, this unintentional surprise test uh, really worked out great. Worked out great for Dane, our, the truck owner, uh, our customer because he had no cost, uh, honestly. Like this is a, I'm still shocked to be frank that we didn't have more problems than we did, that even the injector was, was great um, since it didn't get fed with a hardened steel bits and pieces from a CP4, uh, it, it's good. So really in this case, we wouldn't have had to have done anything other than try to get some of the bad fuel out of it. Um, a guy could have just kept going, uh, not had any downtime, any unnecessary expense. I'm highly confident if this type of fuel was ingested by any CP4 based pump, the odds of it surviving would be very, very slim. Um, so either way, we're gonna throw it back together and he'll be up and running. Thanks.